Welcome to Computing at Home with Digital Schoolhouse. My name is Estelle, otherwise known as Comsci Geek, and I am a computing teacher and I also develop resources for the programme. We specialise in, de specialise in delivering computing workshops that are accessible, educational and fun. You are watching part two of our Machine Code Mario workshop. This workshop is standalone, meaning that you don't need to watch part one to take part, but you might find it useful to go back and watch it to get a full understanding of what we're doing. You can watch any of our previously streamed workshops on our YouTube channel. Just search YouTube for Digital Schoolhouse. To all learners watching, remember you can pause the video at any time to take notes, collect your thoughts or take part in the workshop alongside me. If you do decide to pause the video, just be aware that when you start it again, you might need to just wind it, wind it back um, to get back to where you left off. The Digital Schoolhouse team are ready and waiting in the chat. So should you have any questions, you can pop those into the chat throughout. I will also be taking five minutes to answer your questions at the end of the workshop. Parents and guardians, you might want to watch the next bit as it explains how to access our resources. But after that, feel free to join in or sit nearby to supervise if you want to. Let's get started. OK, so first of all, let's have a look at the resources that you're going to need for today's workshop. So first of all, if you have completed the previous part of this workshop, you'll need your um, design sheet that you planned your level on. If you haven't got one of these, feel free to just follow the instructions that I'm going through and don't worry too much about the actual level design, just follow my steps. And then when you have completed my example, you can then go back and create your own version. So if you were with me last time, then you'll have your design sheet. You'll also need a copy of Super Mario Maker 2 on Switch. Um, unfortunately, this workshop does require to, you to have the game to be able to create the level. And as alongside that, you're going to need the test pages from the workshop resources, the worksheet resources, and you're going to need um, pages 9, 10 and 11. Um, these are the beginners test sheets. OK, so those are the ones that you're going to need. So that's that's um, uh, page 9, page 10 and give me a second, page 11. There you go. So that's what you're going to need. Alternatively, if you don't have a printer, um, you can use pen and paper instead if you want to. That's absolutely fine. And then perhaps use um, test numbers instead of um, having the actual tests written out in full. That's absolutely fine. I'll explain a bit more about that as we go along. OK, right. Um, I'll also quickly explain where to find our worksheets on our website in case anybody needs that. Um, so just bear me a moment while I get that ready for you now. OK, so if you're planning to access our resources via our website, what you need to do is go onto the Internet um, go to digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. Then you need to go so to our website, then you need to go to resources, go to live workshops. Scroll down and find the Machine Code Mario workshop. Obviously, if you're playing, um, if you're taking part in this workshop on YouTube, you may find that you need to scroll further down the page um, because as the workshops um, are no longer the live ones, they go down further down the page. Then you're going to click on where it says Machine Code Mario. And you'll need to download the worksheets which are at the bottom here. So as I said earlier, you'll need um, the beginners test sheets and you can tell the beginners test sheets because they have a B in front of them so if I scroll down a little bit so you're going to need here we go there's the first one so page 9 10 and 11 activity B3 and B4 there you go so they're the ones that you're going to need so pages 9 10 and 11 and as I said if you prefer you can do this on paper and just write the test number down um, and we'll talk more about that as we go along okay Excellent. So I've gone through where to find our resources for today. Hopefully you are ready to start. Um, if not, do feel free to pause and get everything that you need together. Excellent. OK, so um, we are going to be looking at part two of Machine Code Mario today, which is um, now taking what we've done so far and actually um, converting it into a level using Super Mario Maker 2. In this workshop, you're going to learn about binary representation of deanery, 
and different types of testing. Don't worry if you're not completely sure about the binary representation of deanery. I'll go through a quick recap of that before we do anything. Um, so you, hopefully that will just give you a little bit of information. But if you're really struggling, go back to part one of this workshop, which I said earlier, you'll find on our YouTube channel and you can go through the detailed explanation of how binary works, why computers use it, and some simple techniques for conversion. Um, so just very quickly, deanery is just the normal numbers that you would use in maths, so the normal zero to nine digit type numbers. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on that because I went through that last time. Okay, so today we're going to be, as I said last time, imagining a world where you need to know machine code to complete Mario courses. So here is the design I came up with last time. This is my course. Um, so the idea was, if you remember, that we will go, we would have to open mystery boxes, but rather than just be able to open any of them, we'd have a certain pattern that we would use, that we use it using to represent a particular number. So in this case, I only need to open up the first and the fourth box, um, because in binary, that would represent the number nine, because we'd have um, a coin in the um, place value of one, in that position and a coin in the place value of eight and if we added eight and one together we'd end up with nine which gives us nine so just very quickly just to recap if anyone um isn't sure excuse me i'm knocking my stool um if anyone isn't sure about binary i'm gonna do a very quick recap on it for you so cards are quite a nice way of working with binary if you're new to it so I want you to imagine that if the card is turned over, and these are some of our amazing Digital Schoolhouse Super Mario Maker 2 cards. Um, if the card is turned over, that's representing a zero in binary. That means that we don't want to include that particular place value in the number because binary works in a very similar way to how deanery works. And deanery, as I said earlier, is our normal number system, okay? So the idea is in binary code, is that the place values are one, then two, then four, then eight. So you might notice that it doubles each time. One, two, four, eight. I went through this last time, so I don't want to do too much detail. And the way that you can tell it whether or not that particular place value needs to be added into the number is because there'll be a one underneath it. So if we had the binary number one, zero, one, zero, that means we'd only be adding in the number eight and two because there's a one underneath both of those place values. So we do eight plus two, which would give us the value of 10. So the binary number 1010 in deanery, in our normal number system, is the number 10. Okay, so you can do this quite nicely using cards. Have the card turned over, whoops, excuse me, have the card turned over to represent a zero. And if you turn it so it's face up, that would represent a one. So if we do the same example as the one I just showed you, which was one, zero, one, zero, we'd only turn over the cards on the eight um, place value and the two place value. And then we can really simply add those together. Eight plus two gives us 10. So that's quite a nice way to work through it if you are completely new and you aren't quite sure what I mean by binary. Okay, so very, very quickly, that's a quick recap of what we looked at last time. So we are now going to take what we did and convert our plan into an actual level. So we thought about this in quite a lot of detail. We thought about what the course completion condition was going to be, and that's based on the number of coins that they should be able to collect by opening the correct mystery boxes. And inside the boxes that they shouldn't be opening, we actually hid, we said we were going to hide a lava bubble so that if that popped out, there's a high chance that you might end up killing Mario um, and he can't complete the level. So that's what we ended up with last time. Okay, excellent. So if you haven't already, get your switch ready, get it open, get it turned on, make sure you've got Super Mario Maker 2 in there um, because we now get, need to get started on actually using the game. Really exciting. So go ahead, turn it on, get ready to make your game. Okay, so bear me a second while I quickly get the right thing open on here. And I need to turn that on, and I need to turn that on. Okay, so hopefully, if it just wakes up, you should see my Mario Maker appear 
on here. There we go. Hopefully you can hear it quite nice, uh, level of volume, and it should be just about perfect so you can hear what I'm saying over the top of the background music. Okay, so I've um, done it from the title um, screen, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along with me nice and easily. Um, I'm having to use my controller, so normally I would do this by pressing on the, on the actual touch screen of the switch. Um, so I do apologise if I make a couple of mistakes, it's just because I'm not quite used to using the controller for doing the levels in Super Mario, Ma Mario Maker. And I'd recommend that you do this as well by using the touch screen, it's a little bit easier than trying to do it using the um, controllers. Um, but it's absolutely fine if you do decide to do, use the controllers like me, it's not a problem. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is press the left and right bumpers together, which will let the, um, the game know that you want to start. And you need to go into the make side. Okay, so this will open up a level, um, either it'll be the level that you had previously open in the play side, or alternatively, it might be one that you've created previously. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do, and I've just realised you can't quite see um, part of the screen because um, of where things are laid out. So I'm just going to very quickly just move the overlay slightly so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going, going to go down to that very bottom icon, the one that looks like a, a rocket, that's called the reset rocket, and we're going to reset the level so we have a completely blank slate to work with. Okay, so once you've got onto the rocket, if you press and hold on that, it will make this course reset appear and it will reset your course so you can start from scratch. Okay, so that's the first job to do. The next thing that you need to do is you also need to move the end point of the game so it's closer to the start. So you can see the start already. So the start is this bit here, um, and but the end point is right over the other side which but for our purposes, for what we want to actually do with this particular example, that's a bit too far away. We don't want it to be quite so far um, because all we need to do is create our um, level design like this. Okay, so you want to, we want to move things closer because our start and end point need to be fairly close to each other. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Okay, let's wait for this to wake, wake back up again. Bear with me a second. Okay, there we go. So. As I said, we're going to move the end point closer to the start. Now, the way that we do that, I'm just going to go back to the start so it's easy for me to see what I'm doing and make sure I get things close enough. There we go. Um, I'm going to go down to the icon that looks a bit like a IKEA trolley with a box on it. So a trolley with a box on it. It's the one that's just next to the rocket, the reset rocket. If you click on that, it'll open up this little menu for you, which is used... Okay, I just realised it turned my, my mic off there, so sorry about that, I'll just repeat what I just said. So what I was just saying was that I would, um, bear me a second, I was moving the um, reset rocket so that I could, nope, sorry, I beg your pardon, I completely confused myself. I was about to move the end point, so the end point is closer to the start position, that's what I was going to do. So apologies that I lost the audio there for a moment, hopefully you didn't lose too much. The only other thing I had just said was that I, on the visualizer, was we moved them closer so that the start point and the end point were closer together because we don't want them to be too far apart um, because it would make it difficult to um, see clearly what you're trying to do. So that's what I was just saying. So just wait for this to just wake back up again and then we can carry on with where we left off. Okay, let's wait for it to wake up. Do, 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 do. And... doesn't normally take this long so bear with me a second I apologize that it's not coming up um, no, it's really having a moment <laughs> technology hey let's wake this one up make maybe I need to just make it force it to wake back up again so bear with me a second while I just um, deactivate and reactivate it and hopefully it will then come back on um, not quite sure why it's decided to turn off let's see Nope, still nothing there. Let's try that again. Not quite sure why it's done that. It's very strange. Um, nope, still nothing coming back. Hmm, very odd. Okay. Um, 
I'm not quite sure what's happened, why it's decided to turn off. Um, I'm going to just try turning my switch off and on again, so apologies um, for those of you just watching the stream. I'm not quite sure why um, it's decided to, to lose the, um, the actual capture from my game. I'm just going to try turning off and on again. Um, as with all of these kind of things, it's often the way that you need to repair things, turn it off and on again. Um, it's surprising how often that actually does solve problems. So bear me a moment while I um, just sort that out and then I'll come back on with you. So apologies that you're um, having to look at me, um, just not quite getting things working correctly. So just bear me a second while I sort that up, out. Um, let's wake it back up again. Okay. I'm just going to try changing a setting. Might might solve the problem. Um, and transition it across. Hopefully, this will then wake it up. Alternatively, I will just move things over onto the uh, visualizer if worst comes to worst. Um, Hopefully, this will get it working again. No, it's completely decided it doesn't want to work. Okay, so I'm going to move my switch over and I'm going to do this under the visualizer. Um, not ideal, but hey, technology is one of those things that sometimes doesn't like to do what you want it to do. So bear me a second while I switch it back over and I'm going to use my switch on the visualizer instead, which wasn't what I was intending to do, but that's fine. Okay, so bear me a second. So there is my switch. Um, and I'm going to just wake it up and then we'll use it on here instead. Okay, so apologies that it's now quite a lot smaller than, than I'd intended to use with you. So it's not ideal. Um, right, okay, so what we were gonna do is, I can actually do this a little bit easier now because I can actually use my my hands, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, so. I am going to, there we go, I've just woken it back up again. Okay, there we are. Right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna use the icon just here, which is the one that we need to um, reset the start and end position. So I'm gonna press that, and as I said earlier, that brings up this menu along the bottom that allows you to bring the goal, or the end point of the game, closer to the start point. So at the moment, they're a little bit too far away from each other, which makes it a little bit difficult to work with them. So I'm gonna just realize I'm not showing you this on screen. There you go, sorry. Okay, so what I was just saying is, I'll just pop that back up, is that you need to press this little icon here, which is the icon that's used for moving the start and end position, the start and the goal, so that we can actually move them closer together, which is what I was, about, I was talking about earlier. So remember from our design, moving our start and end point closer together. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to move them so that they're, they're much, uh, much better in terms of how far apart they are. So press that icon. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna move the goal so it's almost next to the start. So all you do is you just drag it along, keep dragging it until you end up with it around about there. You might wanna move it along a little bit. You can make small adjustments just by clicking on this little arrow here. So as I said earlier, it's actually quite nice being able to do this again using just uh, my fingers because actually it makes it a little bit easier to show you how to do some of these things. Okay, so there we go. We've managed to um, put those two pieces in the right place. So if we look at the design again, which is just underneath my design again, the next thing we're gonna do is we need to fill in the ground so that we actually have the area that we want Mario to walk on. So we're gonna keep the level itself quite simple because we don't wanna to add too much complexity in terms of actually moving through the level. The complexity is in having to solve the binary to be able to um, move to the end of the, the to um, complete the level. So we're gonna go up to the ground, which is this one up here. And to fill it in, once you've got it selected, you literally just drag. Okay, you can fill in underneath as well, which will make it look more like the ground that you can see at the start and the end position. Once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is add in the mystery boxes. So on the example that we've been working on um, from last session, we have missed four mystery boxes because we're going to a binary number of a maximum value of 15. 
So you might remember that it was 15 because we do 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. And that gives us a value of 15. So the maximum number you can represent with four digit binary number is the number 15. So to do this, grab the mystery boxes and you're going to pop those into your game now. So you're going to do four, remember? So one, two, three, four. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the ground blocks again, which was this one here, remember? Use the ground blocks again and you're going to do almost like a pixel art version of the number. OK, so the number that I'm representing, if you remember from my design, there it is, is the number nine. OK, so let's pop that in now. So all I'm doing is filling around the outside and then going down and I'm going to leave the gap so that it actually looks like a number nine, like so. There we go. So that is my number nine. OK, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to do a very quick test just to make sure that Mario can actually fit underneath the number, because if he can't, we need to make some changes. So I'm just going to grab Mario and I'm going to put him right back at the start and I'm going to do a quick play just to test that he actually can fit underneath, which he can. I'm going to check that he can open up the mystery boxes which you can, perfect. So that's absolutely fine. I can now go back to my make view. So if I press on make again, that will take me back into the design view and allow me to make changes. Right, so the next job is to put the um, lava bubbles inside the mystery boxes, which are going to be the ones that we don't want to open according to our binary number. Remember we're using place values to tell us which of the mystery boxes should be opened and which ones shouldn't be. So in this case, the only ones that should have coins in are the first uh, mystery box and the fourth mystery box. The two in the middle should have lava bubbles, okay? So to get the lava bubble, if you can't see it in your menu, if you go to the little search um, icon, which is um, shown by a magnifying glass, that will let you find all the different types of block, enemy, object in the game. And the one that you want, if you go through and see terrain, then you can see items, then you can see enemies, and you can see, um, there's the, the gizmos, the objects. So you can have a look through the different ones by using the shoulder bun buttons that will allow you to go through and find a different thing and the thing that we want is the lava bubble which is in enemies but you have to go through to the third page of enemies okay so there's the lava bubble there so if you can't see it in your menu at the top that's what you'll need to do so go to the magnifying glass go into the enemy section and use the shoulder buttons the shoulder buttons are these bits to go through the different pages until you find the one that's got the lava bubble in it and just click on it okay that will give you the lava bubble and also it will automatically select it so once you've done that you need to drop it in to your game so i'm going to click up here to select it and i'm going to drop it just there for now and then i'm going to put him inside the mystery boxes that i don't want open so i'm going to check my design again and the ones i don't want opened are these two here so I'm going to drag him and I'm going to drop him inside like that. And you can see he's gone inside because it's made like a little tiny exclamation mark in there, which hopefully you can just about see. There you go. Little tiny exclamation mark. And we're going to do the same with another one. So if we look at my design, there it is there. We don't want, we want one in that one as well. So we're going to drop into the game, then click and hold and drag it onto the mystery box where we want to add it and then let go. Okay. If you make a mistake and you put it in the wrong place, which is easy to do, so don't worry, it's just one of those things, you can undo by pressing on the little dog. Okay, he's called the undo dog. And you can undo the previous step. So if you make a mistake or something doesn't go quite as you expect it, press that as many times as you need to to go back to where, um, where it was correct. So you might need to go back a few steps. You might only need to press it once. Once you've got everything in place, you could do one more quick test to make sure everything's where it should be. So I'm going to move Mario back to the beginning again. I'm going to press play. I'm just going to do a quick test. 
So I'm going to go through, I'm going to open the mystery boxes. Oh, no, I don't want to open that one. I opened a lava bubble. And I open that one. There we go. And then I can exit the game. Okay. So that seems to be working fine. Lovely. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the condition that means that the only way that you can complete the game is by actually opening the correct number of mystery boxes and opening the correct ones as well. So to do that, to get the clear condition, you need to go into this little icon here, the one that looks almost like a little, um, like a mountain with a little road up it with a little flag on the top. That's the one that you want to press. Now there's different options that you can go for with the clear condition and the one that you are going to need is you're not going to do reach the goal without taking damage because that's not what we want to do so let's have a look so we, there's also reach the goal without standing without landing after leaving the ground that's also not what we want to do so let's have a look at what other options are so you're going to use your right and left shoulder buttons again so just to show you that's these ones again so I'm going to use my shoulder buttons and we want to use the parts. So on my one, it defaults straight to the enemies. So in this case, it's saying reach the goal after defeating all the lava bubbles. But actually, in our example of the game and the way that we're using it, we don't want to do anything really with those lava bubbles. So we want to change that. So make sure you've got your little lava bu bubbles selected and change it by pushing this little um, joyst uh, joystick push it up and change it to the coin. Okay, so reach the goal after grabbing all two coins. So this is right, okay? So yours might not say two, so if you've done a different binary number, so for example, you did maybe the number 15 and you needed to have it so that all of these had coins in, then yours would say reach the goal after grabbing all four coins. That's absolutely fine. So bearing in mind what your design says your number of coins might be slightly different and you should have planned this as well anyway like i did and um, press a to complete that and now you should only be able to clear the level after correct uh, correctly collecting the correct number of coins so we are almost now at this point of being able to do some testing so i'm just going to leave that there because I'm going to talk to you a little bit about testing before we move on. Excellent. Okay, so let's pop back into that so we can talk about how we do it. Okay, so looking at how we test the game. So we're going to talk a little bit about different types of testing. Um, because testing is a really, really important part of making any game. So there's actually a few things that we can we need to talk about before we make a start on that. So first of all, it's really important that you test your game thoroughly. Why is it really important to test your game thoroughly? Because if it goes out and it has major problems with it, people aren't going to be happy. They're going to be asking for their money back. They might not be as... Um, trusting of you in the future in terms of you creating a really good game that's really easy to play and works well so it's really important to test your game thoroughly what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a test plan which is a document that sets out what needs to be tested the criteria for passing and failing and space to record the test result and we're going to use that to test our game really super thoroughly um okay yep so moving on to the next bit there are some different types of testing there's alpha testing which is what we're going to be doing um, as our example for today which is a type of testing that's performed by employees of the company that make the, the software itself and the purpose of that is to identify all possible issues and bugs before releasing the product to everyday users or the public so as i said earlier it's really important to make sure you iron out any problems in your game um, because if it goes out to the public and it doesn't work correctly, they might lose confidence in you for when you want to release your next game. So it's really important. And we call them bugs, problems in a game. Um, I'll 
very, very quickly talk to you about that. So they're called bugs actually because of a lady called Grace Hopper. So Grace Hopper is one of the um, early computing pioneers and she coined the term bugs because she literally found a bug in um, the computers she was working on. Um, so computers in her day were literally the size of a room and she found a moth um, stuck in part of the mechanism and that's where the word bug comes from in terms of issues with computers being a bug. So there you go, a little bit of computing history for you. So it's really important to find any issues or bugs before you um, try and release something to the, to the general public. So we're gonna do two ways of testing, uh, alpha testing our game. We're going to do something that makes sure that the game meets the original specification for the game. And we call that the user requirements. And we are going to do um, that type of testing, which is called black box testing. That means we don't worry too much about what's going on inside the software itself. So we don't really think about how like, the actual guts of the game work. We only think about the inputs and the outputs. So we make sure that what you put in is what you're getting out and what you expect to get out. We call that black box testing. Um, and the second thing we're going to then do is we're going to purposely play the game to try and crash or break the software. And we call that destructive testing. So we're trying to break the game. OK, I don't mean like throwing your switch across the room or anything like that. I mean, literally, you just try and play the game in a way that you think that's perhaps you wouldn't normally play the game if you're just following the rules correctly, um, just to see what happens. So what happens if you try and leave the edge of the uh, map or what happens if you open something that you shouldn't be, um, that kind of thing. So that's the kind of tests that we're going to do. So the user requirements for our Super Mario Maker 2 level that we've been working on are that they should it should use Super Mario Maker 2. It uh, allows the user to actually move Mario. It displays the instructions for the required binary conversion. It uses mystery boxes with coins to represent the binary number. It uses lava bubbles inside the boxes that should not be opened. And the course clear condition is set at the right number of coins and it should actually use a clear condition. So those are the user requirements that we're going to be testing for to make sure that our game meets the needs of the people who are going to be playing it. So we're going to use the black box testing sheet to start with and we're going to complete each test on our switches and then we're going to tick across to show whether we think the course passes or fails each of the tests. So I'm going to hop back onto the visualizer to show you what I'm doing. So I'm just going to move my switch out of the way for a minute just to show you the test sheet so you can see clearly what I'm doing. And it is activ activity B3, that's the sheets you're going to need, which is the black box testing sheets. So you can see up here, it says black box testing, activity B3. And I haven't started with the right sheet because I've started with test number five. So let me just switch over so I've got the right test to start with. There we go. OK, so the first test that we're going to do is whether or not the software that we're using for the game is using Super Mario Maker 2. So it's quite important also to identify how you're going to test the game. So in this case, we're going to test it by opening the game and the required course and check that it loads correctly. So here we go. I haven't saved it. Um, so it's already open. So we can actually say yes. We've got the game open and it's got the right required course on it and we can see that it's loading correctly when we press the play button it's loading correctly excellent okay so we can tick to say that we've passed that level i've just noticed i've accidentally added an extra lava bubble so i'm going to use the undo dog to get rid of that there we go then it says allows the user to move mario so move mario using the joy cons on the switch OK, I'm actually going to reconnect my Joy-Cons up to my Switch so this makes it a little bit easier to show you rather than having to have them separately on my grip. There we go. I'll open them back up again. OK, right. So I'm going to allow the user to move Mario and move him around using the Joy-Cons. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move him back to the beginning. So to move him back to the beginning, just click and hold on him and just kind of drag him along until it should be where the uh, beginning of the course starts. So I'm going to press play. I'm just going to check that I can actually move Mario using the joystick, which I can. There we go. So that's fine. So I can tick that off on my 
test sheet. So I'm going to pause it there and I can tick that one. So allow the user to move Mario, move Mario around using the Joy-Cons on the Switch. Tick. That is passed. Excellent. Okay. Next thing, displays the instructions for the required binary conversion. Check to see the instructions um, to create the number that the player should be converting to binary is displayed at the beginning of the course. Okay, so let's do that one again. So press play. We can see really clearly, there it is, there's a number that should be converted. So we can say a definite tick for that one. That one is passed. Then it says, uses mystery boxes to represent the binary number. Check that the game has a row of at least four mystery boxes. There they are, one, two, three, four. So we can tick that, excellent. Okay, so now we can move on to uh, page two of our tests. So moving on to the next test, uh, test number five, mystery boxes that need to be opened rep to represent the number have coins inside. So we can open the boxes needed to represent the binary number and make sure that they all have coins inside. So we are using the number nine, remember? So we can do a quick reminder of which coin, which of the um, boxes need to open. We can do that with our cards. So to represent the number nine, we only need place the first place value and the fourth place value. So we should only need to open the first box and the fourth mystery box. So let's do that. So we're going to hop over. And I'm going to open the first box. Yep, there's a coin in there. Perfect. And then we're going to do the next one, which should be the, the fourth one. And check that. Now, obviously, yours is going to be slightly different if you're doing a different number. But mine's nine. So those are the boxes that I need to open. Excellent. OK, so I can tick that one off. So that one has passed. Then it says mystery boxes that should not be opened have lava bubbles inside. So how am I going to test that? I'm going to open the boxes that are not needed to represent the number and check that they all have lava bubbles inside. OK, so I'm going to go to this one. Yep, there's a lava bubble in there. I now need to try and avoid it to not die. And open that one. And there's a lava bubble in there as well. Excellent. I'm actually going to pause the game before I do the next one. So we can tick that off. We have passed that one. OK, so the course clear condition is set at the right number of coins. It says, try to complete the game after opening all required boxes and walk through the gate at the end of the course. OK, let's test it. So we're going to go and open just the first and the fourth and test it to see if we can go through the gate at the end, which we can. And if I wait for a second, it should take me back into edit mode. Yay, perfect. So that's working. So we can tick that off as a pass. You can't clear the course if you haven't attempted the conversion. Try to complete the game without opening any boxes and walk through the gate at the end of the course. OK, so this is our last test. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Mario back to the beginning. And we're going to drop him just there and we're going to press play. And this time we're going to test it to see if we can try and just exit the course without opening anything at all. Let's have a look. So off we go through the gate no nope. reach the goal after grabbing all two coins no we haven't completed the clear condition so that's clearly working so pop it back into design mode and we can tick this off okay so on mine i've just checked all my tests oops that's the next sheet i've tested all my different tests and i can clearly see that all of them have passed but what would you do if perhaps one of them didn't pass? Maybe you found that there was too many coins or maybe you found that you'd forgotten to put a lava bubble somewhere or you put too many lava bubbles. So what you need to do in those examples is just go back in and make any changes. So you'll go back through and you'll correct any errors that you might have made in your game. OK, so that's exactly what a programmer would do if they made a mistake. They'd just go back through and they'd correct any of the tests that weren't working. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to look at doing a little bit of destructive testing. So we're going to use the destructive testing sheet this time and we're going to complete each of those tests. And again, tick or cross to show whether your course has passed or failed each test. 
So this one, again, we've got the test written out for us. The first test is to, if the game restarts, if Mario leaves the stage. Now, in my example, I don't think I can actually leave the stage, but let's just test it. So I'm going to press play, and I'm going to try to make Mario leave the stage. So we'll go right off the side. No, nope, it won't let me go that way. Let's try this side. Uh, nope, won't let me go that way either. So I can say that that test has passed. So there's no way of actually leaving the stage, but if there was, then I'd be looking for it to restart. But in my example, there isn't a way of actually leaving the stage. So that, that one has actually passed. But in your example, you might have a way of leaving the stage and then you'll be able to test it to see if it restarts as a result. The next test is the course clear condition is set at the right number of coins and you've got to try to make Mario complete the course by entering the gate at the end of the course without the correct number of coins. So to do this, I'm going to go and open one of my boxes, but only one. And I'm going to try and go through the gate, but you can see still getting the message up to tell me that I haven't got the clear condition yet because I need to have two coins. So I'm going to tick that one to say I've passed that one as well. Well done. The game restarts if Mario is hit by a lava bubble. So I'm going to deliberately open a mystery box containing a lava bubble and check that Mario dies and the game restarts if he's hit by it. So let's go. So we're going to go back. This time we're going to open one of these with a lava bubble inside and I'm going to purposely get hit by it. There we go. We can see that that definitely worked. OK, and my last test is can't move left at the start. It says try to move Mario left at the beginning of the course. So we're going to press play and, and then see how that works. So I'm going to move to the left and see if I can move to the left, which I can't. So again, like my first test, I can say that's passed because I, I can't move left at the start of my level. Excellent. So we've completed our destructive testing and we've made sure that they all the tests are passed. So as, as before, if any of your tests were failed and you put a cross in any of them, you will need to do a little bit of fixing. So if you find any failed tests in your course, this is now your opportunity to do a little bit of fixing and make sure that your course works correctly. OK, so give yourself a bit of time to do that. So I'm going to pop it over to you and give yourself some time to fix any tests that perhaps aren't working as they should be. OK, so hopefully you've now fixed any of those failed tests. Obviously, pause it if you need to, if you've got a bit more testing to do. That's absolutely fine. Um, but you should have now completed the testing phase of development and you've completed your Super Mario level. So well done. So today in this workshop, you've learned about binary re representation of Deanery. And you did that by learning about representing a binary number using the mystery boxes to represent the place values of the binary number and then you're doing a little bit of testing around that to make sure that it worked correctly and the number was represented correctly. You've also learned about different types of testing and you've done that by using your test sheet. So you did two types of testing. You did um, black box testing which just made sure whether the inputs and outputs worked correctly. Didn't worry too much about the actual guts of the um, program. And you also did some destructive testing to see if you could break things. And they were both examples of alpha testing, um, which is done inside the actual um, software house to make sure that everything is working as it should do before it's released to the general public. So that is what you've managed to do today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Now, before I um, have a little, we have a little look at what we're going to be doing next time. Um, and before I answer questions, I am going to do a very quick um, demonstration of where you can find some extra resources with this. So if you've enjoyed doing this, I wanted to show you a couple of ideas of things that you could do to take it further. So I'm just going to jump um, back onto my desktop to show you that. 
and hopefully this will be useful to you if you're interested in taking things a little bit further. Okay, so if you are interested in having a look at this in more detail and maybe making a little bit more of a complex level, what you could do is head over to the Digital Schoolhouse website, go to resources and live workshops, find the Super Mario Maker Machine Code Mario workshop. As I said earlier, if it's not listed there, you might find it's further down the page um, as things move around as we've done uh, different live workshops. Um, open up where it says Machine Code Mario and go to where it says Access All Files here. Apologies for that popping up. Um, go to Machine Code Mario Files and then you're going to go to where it says, if I wait for it to load, there we go, go to where it says Video. Uh, and in there, you'll find there's four different videos that go through what I've just done. So the one that you've just done is the, the V1. If you want to have a look at doing some slightly more advanced ways of building your levels, there's version two, version three, and version four. Um, and they go through lots of different ideas of ways of building your binary inspired levels. Some of them use pipes so that if you go down the wrong pipe, for example, Mario just drops off the bottom of your level. Um, some of them use um, hidden areas so that if you go in through a door and you end up falling into an area that you then can't get out of. Um, there's lots of different examples. Have a look at those. They might give you some inspiration for creating other examples of binary inspired levels. The other thing is if you want to do some of your own testing, um, so the type of testing that we did today, I gave you all the examples and all the actual tests that we were going to do. And I talked about how things were going to be tested and we did the testing that way. So if you want to have a go at doing your own testing and actually writing your own test plan, if you go back to our worksheets, which I didn't actually explain where to find, they're on the Machine Code Mario uh, page and they are in the bottom section, the DSH worksheets Machine Code Mario and scroll down until you find the blank test sheets. So they're below the ones that we looked at today, below the user requirements. Um, these are just blank versions of the ones that I used with you um, in today's session. So if you're interested in having a further look at testing and thinking about your own types of tests, then that's what you can do there. So you'll find there's an expected outcome and an actual outcome as well. So you can actually start to put a bit of detail into what you expect to get um, to happen as a result of those tests. So those are in there as well if you're interested in looking in a bit more detail at how tests work. Okay, I'm gonna hop over onto um, the camera and also onto the chat now. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat on our, um, on our stream. So feel free to do that if you have any questions. Okay, so hopefully um, you might have some questions for me. Um, it's always nice to have a couple of, of ideas from people that are playing along with us and um, learning some new things about binary. So I'll just give you a chance to ask me any questions and then I'll close the session with explaining a bit about what we're going to be doing next time. There you go. DSH have just posted uh, reminding you to sign up for our next live workshop. Um, that's all right. Jay Bear Hunt, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about the technical, uh, technical difficulties earlier on. I have really no idea what happened. It just decided it would go off and wasn't coming back on again. Hopefully we'll get that sorted for next time. Um, one of those wonderful things about working with technology. Okay, it doesn't look like we've got any questions. I'll have one more, last look after I've explained what we're doing next time, just in case anyone's popped anything in there. Okay, so next time, if um, you are gonna be around to join us, so this is gonna be on Tuesday at 11, um, we are going to be looking at part by games again, but we're going to be doing something in a little bit more detail um, from what we've done previously. So next time we are going to be, da, 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 uh, we're going to be looking at part by games chef's edition, and we are going to be looking at how to create a um, prototype for a computer game where we've actually been commissioned to do that. So rather than having to create something that's completely our own idea, actually working with some um, some prerequisites, so some like rules and reg uh, regulations and images and assets that the company provides for you. So we are going to be using some assets. By assets, I mean images and um, 
sound files and video anything basically that the the company provides for you to put in the game they've been provided by outright games and we're going to be creating some ideas a prototype game around gigantosaurus so if you're interested in joining me in looking at that that's going to be on tuesday at 11 a.m excellent so i'm just going to double check there isn't any questions um Excellent. So EOS 16 says that their 10 year old loves it and they've been adding extra binary numbers to their level. So well done. That's really fantastic. I'm so pleased to hear that you're enjoying uh, learning about binary numbers. So excellent. OK, so thank you for watching. Um, this has been Machine Code Mario Part 2. I hope that you've enjoyed um, learning about different types of number and learning about how to represent binary numbers in a quite different way to perhaps you might have done previously. Have a go at making your levels as complex as you want to. Thank you for taking part. I hope you've had fun and learned something new. If you've enjoyed this workshop, check out our YouTube channel for more follow along activities. If you've got any questions or feedback for me, please email dsh at uk. Now, we'd love to see you learning computing at home with Digital Schoolhouse. Parents and guardians, please feel free to um, share any images or videos using the hashtag computing at home on Twitter or on Facebook. Also, for those of you who love writing, Digital Schoolhouse have launched a creative writing competition, which you can find more information about on our website. If you are the parent of a primary age pupil and are interested in finding out about Digital Schoolhouse and how they can work with your child's school, um, you can find out more information about our programme on our website, which is digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. You can find our contact information in the section below or at the end of this video. Lastly, I wanted to say a huge well done for taking part today. I'm Estelle and I look forward to seeing you next time.